If I closed my eyes, I could still feel the sun on my cheeks and nose, the prickling warmth that soaked into me, a sensation unlike any other that made my heart soft and my thoughts safe and sure. That's how I knew what the sun was, in a way, even though it disappeared a long, long time ago when I was just a baby. In my world, the sun didn't exist. In my world, the rain fell heavily over the fields and forest. The drops bouncing off the rooftops to hit the puddles in thousands of tiny splashes. Here, there was no summer, autumn or winter. There was no spring, which had been the best season of them all, according to Grandpa. Here, there was no night or day. Only the clock on the tower in the square told us when it was time to go to bed and when it was time to get up. My world was dark and wet, and it had been that way for as long as I could remember. Day after day with rain and gray clouds, with never thunder and lightning. And if grandpa hadn't forgotten his bread one day when he went off to work, and if I didn't, hadn't discovered the secret he was hiding in his greenhouse, then maybe my world would have stayed that way, heavy and dark forever. My name is Maya Lunde and I'm the author of Lily and the Sun Keeper. Hi, my name is Lisa Isoto. I am the illustrator. Maya Lunde and I uh, also made uh, the Snow Sister together. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, Lily and the Sun Keeper, our new spring book. Yes, um, it is actually a spring book because uh, when we worked with the Snow Sister, um, we didn't plan to make four books, but we suddenly realized, well, this is the winter book and we loved so much to work together. So we decided to make a spring book as well. And hopefully there will also be a book for summer and autumn. Um, the Snow Sister was a huge success um, and it was really exciting to follow that book and it still is. It's sold to 27 languages and the film rights are sold to Hollywood. So right now I'm actually writing the film script, which is a bit scary and exciting. But now uh, the Lily and the, the Sun Keeper is still sort of uh, a secret because it's not out yet. It will be published in Norway this autumn. The book is about Lily, who is a strong and curious uh, young girl. Uh, she lives in this place that we heard had no uh, light, uh, no uh, spring, no uh, winter or autumn, and um, there's only rain and dark. And she has lost her family. She lives with her grandpa. And her life has been um, like that uh, for as long as she can remember. But one day she follows her grandpa um, into the forest where he keeps a secret. And she finds this wonderful uh, valley, uh, a hidden valley where everything is different. And there starts her adventure, which will actually change everything for everyone. Um, it's been such an exciting um, story to work with Lisa on because she has managed to to take the story and make it so much um, uh, more, you know, to make it alive with her illustrations. So I, I'm excited to hear more about how she did it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, Maya's words um, makes me feel stuff. I feel Lily's happiness, I feel her loneliness, I feel her pain sometimes, and her anger. And the way that Maya writes uh, makes it easier to me to visualize, for me to visualize those feelings uh, because she's so good with her words. Uh, but it was a bit difficult in the beginning to find out what kind of world this takes place in. Um, is it on another planet? Is it on, in our world? Is it our world 100 years ago? And what does the houses look like? Look like what does the trees look like? 
So um, I made some sketches and we finally found out how Lily is going to look like. Um, she's uh, vulnerable, but she's also very strong um, and she has a lot of courage. So it took some time to find the characters. Um, and I also had a lot of fun with all the contrasts in this story with the colors, uh, with the beginning of the book, with the, the blues and the grays and the darkness because the sun is gone. Uh, and then, uh, as Maya said, said, she finds this, this secret garden in a way um, with lots of colors and flowers and the greens and reds and yellows and, and the buzzing of the bees and the warmth. Um, and then uh, the world changes again uh, in the end of the book. I'm not going to spoil the end, but I can say that suddenly everything is dry and red and yellow and black. So all these contrasts has been so fun to work with uh, and I'm really excited to, to show you uh, the illustrations and the book. Yeah, and this book is the spring book and it really is about spring in several ways because um, Lily, she is uh, a child which is in to, she's going some, some, she's going further. She's, she's about to become a teenager. And it's also about um, her personal spring, so to speak. Um, it's a coming of age story. Uh, it's about growing up. Um, I think this book can be read by everyone. Like the Snow Sister, we had readers of all ages. People from um, elderly homes loved it. Uh, uh, grown-ups read it to each other and I think this book uh, in this book the readers will find the same sort of all age uh, themes and that it will relate uh, hopefully to everyone um, from maybe the age of eight nine to a hundred um, and I think it will also uh, make people really appreciate spring which is the best time of the year, isn't it? I hope you like it. And if you want to hear more uh, from the book, we have a video on YouTube, uh, which I know you will have the link to. So, so there you can, you can both hear me read and uh, see Lisa's wonderful illustrations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.